Cash Flow Diary Podcast, Episode 70. Congratulations, you showed up. Give yourself a high five in celebration of your success. Welcome to the Cash Flow Diary, where new and experienced investors come to take confident action towards their goals. Your host is a family man, a real estate entrepreneur, investor, coach, and instructor. As a master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's Cash Flow 101 game, he's inspired many to begin their journey into creating cash flow for themselves and their family. And now, here he is to offer you the tools required to earn the income desired. Your cash flow coach, Jay Massey. All right, and welcome to another episode of the Cash Flow Diary Podcast. I am your host, Jay Massey. I am excited. I'm just excited because you guys are probably always used to me being excited, but I'm also excited because I get to learn new things. And that's one of the greatest things that I always want to tell you guys is that you can't learn and look good simultaneously. And I know you know that already. You've heard me say that before. So one of the reasons I like documenting this process as we go towards, you know, having a thousand units and a million square feet is simply because you get to hear me learn as I go through this process. And I think there's value in that. I think there's value in in letting you guys know that, look, I I don't have it all figured out. I I know some things very, very well, uh, but I I don't need to know everything and I can learn everything in what I call just-in-time learning. So I'm hoping that today's episode is going to be that just-in-time learning episode for you where whatever you hear today comes into you in such a way that you're able to take action on it because today we're going to talk a whole lot you've probably been noticing that we've been talking to a lot of entrepreneurs and in, in in terms of you know crms and and, and tools and resources and marketing etc that it's because this is what i'm learning right now i'm going through that process so you're going through it with me congratulations you get i'm dragging you along whether you want to go or not So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, for those of you, if you're joining us for the first time, you can go over to learninvestingnow.com. If you're looking for that entry point into real estate, I know some of you are like, man, I I just like to learn how to generate a lead and be able to get some cash flow going. That was me as well. And one of the first strategies that I learned was known as wholesaling. And then I learned to raise private capital. Go over to learninvestingnow.com. You'll be able to get an ebook and you'll be invited to a webinar where you have the ability to get both of those skill sets today begin that process immediately right now now the other half of you you're saying you know what i I don't want i don't have the time and and you know what i've just got some money i want to get it out there and make it happen that's great totally understood you're going to go over to begin investingnow.com and when you do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to have one of our cash flow coaches contact you because we've got cash flowing property sitting there waiting for you and we'll just go ahead and uh, help you get started building cash flow Now that we're done with that, let me tell you why I'm excited. I'm excited because, as you guys know, cash flow comes in many different forms. It doesn't have to just be in real estate. One of the best things you can do is take your creativity and apply it in any way possible. But what an entrepreneur does is that he or she sees problems and solves them for a profit. Now, as I said earlier... Wealth is a team sport, and you can't do everything yourself. So there are some skill sets by definition that you're not good at, which means that there are other people who are good at those things, and those are the ones that you want to meet. And today we're going to meet one such individual who is killing it when it comes to the multimedia marketing space. And what I want to share with you is that I'm excited. You're going to hear me just learn right now, and hopefully you're learning along with me. But let me let me tell you, this isn't someone who just begun yesterday he's been in the game as they would say since 1998 and let me tell you some of the clients include companies like vonage virgin records the united nations panasonic rockefeller records teddy pendergrass the urban league the national association of real estate brokers now i'm kind of interested about that one aren't we and (laughs) when it comes down to is if they if he's good enough for them i guarantee you you and i right now today are going to be able to listen to mr gary george gary you there yep i am excellent thanks for being here i am so glad that you're here because man the we need help we want to grow our cash flow we got great ideas for our business but nobody knows about it. it's like the best kept secret on the planet uh, <laughs> but i'm told that you can help us with that 
Absolutely. I can definitely help you with that. <laughs> cool. Cool. One of the questions that I always like to ask um, is because I, I liken that most entrepreneurs um, are all uh, today's superheroes. You know, we before we had, you know, Batman and Robin and all, all this, you know, superhero stuff. One of the things I, I think is that our today's entrepreneurs are, you know, today's superheroes. So. Uh, and every superhero has a story behind them before they were a superhero. So what I want to know is, well, what's your origin story? You know, before you were Gary George, what was Gary George like? And and how <laughs> did you decide that this is what you were going to do in, in terms of helping your clients being able to earn, you know, I think it's more than $48 million in the past five years. That, yep. you got to help me out with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I, it came to me and I knew that I was born to be, uh, I was born an entrepreneur, really. I came out the womb knew and knowing that I was going to be, uh, you know, in business for myself. And I had always been in the business independently as a youth. I mean, before I was even a teenager, I had a mail order company where I used nice. to place ads in the uh, uh, Inquirer and other uh, tabloids and publications where we used to sell about, you know, how to get a loan or how to do this or how to get government grants. And I used to go to the library and do these little research papers and basically send out these pamphlets. Um, that was kind of my first taste of real entrepreneur, you know, Lism, and I saw the response and, and, and that was just uh, at that time, I probably was about 12 years old where I realized like, wow, I can really take this thing to another level and really get people to respond all across the world. Um, prior to that, I had always been an entrepreneur in school. I was always selling candy and gum or this. Or I always found something to sell. <laughs> and I just became and always was that that sales that salesperson, the salesman. And I knew when I got out and I said, I, I, you know, I don't want to work for anyone else. But if I am going to work for someone else, the only thing I could do that I could trans form or use in my own endeavors would be sales. That's the one universal position that you can go to any company and work and that you can apply to any business that you have. So for me, I said, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do sales for these companies when I was a teenager and I sold fire safety equipment. I sold cut code knives. I sold, you know, everything you can think of to really hone my sales skills. Um, and that's what really took me over to uh, having my own company in which I was um, utilizing all of those skill sets on top of what I loved, which was the marketing side of it. Uh, they were kind of paired together, but uh, slightly dissimilar. But at the same time, they had a lot of commonality between them and a lot of different skills that I could uh, roll into it. And that's what really got me uh, ingrained in the game. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you, I'll take a step back a little bit too. Before then, we were doing so much creative work. I came from the music industry. And you'll see on our client list, it was a lot of... Uh, artists, a lot of rap artists, a lot of uh, athletes, a lot of actors, stuff like that. And I had worked, I was an audio engineer. I did an internship right out of college and I worked there for about five years. I never intended to be an engineer. I went there purely for connections. And uh, because I was broke and I needed a job and uh, they said, do you want to work? I said, yes, I took the job. I worked that for about four or five years. I, I wind up getting a huge discography that includes uh, Jay-Z, his first album, Unreasonable Doubt. I worked on that. I worked on uh, Biggie Smalls, Mary J. Blige, Funk Master Flex. I wound up doing all these things. And it was, you know, it was a great experience, but it wasn't what I, of course, was set out to do. And uh, we started doing creative work for a lot of those companies. I went on tour. I was doing video and all the other stuff. And um, uh, no one would see the creative work that we did outside of the bigger celebrity stuff that I did. I started to work with smaller companies and smaller artists, and no one would ever see the great work that we did. And uh, that's what pushed me into marketing. I said, I got to help these. I got to help these small businesses really get their stuff out there because they just don't have a clue. They would come and spend 10 grand, 20 grand with us. And then it would just sit by the wayside because they had no clue on what to do with it after that. And uh, that's what really put me forefront and started to offer it out as a service to all of the clients. Wow. That's yep. awesome. I hope you guys heard a couple of things because I, I don't even know if I've said this before, but there are two things that I think was very, very key. You, you know, it's you, you've heard it said before, at least I've heard it said before. Um, that you should take a job for the experience, not the money. And you've done that, it sounds like, multiple times because you said you were taking sales positions to hone your skills. You weren't even talking about, it, it didn't even matter what you sold because you definitely seem to have sold <laughs> a lot of different things. Right. But you went through the process of learning that skill set. And then 
you said you took the the engineering purely for connection so it's not just what you know it's also who you know and when those two things come together who knows uh, what is uh, you know ultimately possible and you've taken that and you just recognized the the problem and you found a way to to solve it using something in in you know that that you were born with for lack of a better way of putting it in this particular case but you also said right. something I thought was really really key that I want to understand because I've heard people say these things before you said marketing and sales are, are very very close together but there's some you you're making a distinction in your mind there is a distinction between the two I would love to know what that distinction looks like. Right, right, right. No, definitely. It's it is uh, like I said, they're very closely paralleled, but at the same time, there's, there's some very separate um, mechanisms that are involved. When it's selling, you're you know, we use sales big time in our marketing endeavors. However, there are certain parts of the marketing process that goes outside of pure selling, and it's more of um, uh, a, a, a broad communications uh, tunnel or channel or means of pushing people or convincing them or, um, you know, convincing them to take an action that you want them to to take. Uh, and then it's looking at it from a broader perspective. You know, most of the time you're doing sales, it's one on one. But when you're doing marketing, it's one to many. And um, there's a different uh, strategy and there's a different mindset that you have to use because you're not just studying one person and pitching that one person. You're pitching thousands of people. So now I have to think outside the box and think like all the thousands of different styled personalities, characteristics. What are the commonalities between the two that I can roll into one presentation or form that's going to resonate with the masses? So it, it, it gets scientific at the same time creative. And I think that's why a lot of us who were in the music side of things and I was a musician and I was a, you know, the, I feel like those parts of our brain all come together when we're working in sales and marketing. And uh, I think that's why a lot of us have transitioned into those positions, because it's like a big, huge puzzle that you're putting together. And I love doing it. Wow. Now, I have one wife and four kids, and I have enough trouble trying to make sure I can <laughs> cover what they're thinking. And you just asked me to think like thousands upon thousands of people. <laughs> this is, I'm a little overwhelmed at this exact moment, but that's all good. Now, <laughs> what will, if this is the case, I mean, th the funny thing is, is that I had a conversation with Blair Singer once. And, um, and for those of you who don't know, he's the Rich Dad Advisor and on, on, sales and all that other stuff in business. And he said to me something, you're like the second person to say this to me or even say these words is you have to, he told me to adopt a one to many approach, a one to many approach. And mm -hmm. I, I'm guessing then that that one to many mindset, if you will, is something that the small business entrepreneur is not well versed in. So mm -hmm. what would you say uh, either? What is like the top three tweaks that you end up making to every client simply because you know we don't know what we don't know but right but these are the top three most common things that you you guys end up bringing to the table to help us begin to generate either more leads and, and grow our databases and, and be able to attract more sellers and buyers etc right right no yeah that's a great question and i mean the one thing that I see happening almost all the time when we take new clients in and we're putting together what they need to really go out there and hit the masses is number one is the fact of just being able to uh, put your best information forward. It's the education of the client. When you educate your client, they become your best client and your best prospect. You become that thought leader. You become that person that they're looking up to. So that's the first thing that we do is we say, you have all this great information. And I interview my clients and they tell me all these great stuff they did. And, you know, and I'm like, wow, these processes are so impressive. But if I read about you, I don't know. I would never have known any of this, you know, and that's 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 the first thing we do is pull out all that great information that they're hiding behind. And we're saying, man, you got all of this stuff. We need to put this out there and you need to tell them you need to give away. And I say this when I do my seminars all the time. I say I tell my people this. I say you need to give away your best stuff. And they look at me like I'm crazy. And I said, yes, give away your best uh, secrets or whatever you want to call it in your business. And don't be scared because no matter what you give away, they can't be you. 
It is a matter of the implementation of what it is that you do. They can know the processes or a certain part of the processes, but they can't necessarily replicate it. Don't be scared. Educate your client. And when they understand that you are the person bringing them enormous value, they, 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 you know, hands down, they come with their wallets out. It's not, it cuts your sales cycle in half. So that's the first thing. Educate the client. Um, uh, my second point would be what we do to pull it out and get them, um, uh, to get them ready. Man, I had it before and I think I lost it, but I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that happens set, that you get yeah. all wrapped up. You're like, I, I like this stuff. I, I forget. <laughs> oh yeah. That. But that one is a big one because the, one of the, one of the funny things is that we occasionally we're starting to get a few emails, not a lot, uh, to the office where people say, man, thanks for producing all this free stuff. And I, I'm just, we're just trying to educate people right. on on the strategies that we're using and what we're going out there to do and uh what it takes to you know generate cash flow you know as it relates right. to real estate and um so if i hear you correctly what you're really saying is education is the marketing piece it, Not- it is it okay. really is yeah the marketing piece is the education and it's it has converged a lot and it has to do with the fact that we have so much information at our fingertips due to the rapidness of the internet uh, and, and moving information is that people are accustomed and now they're getting a bit more desensitized to just straight straight sales messaging um we get so much of it on a daily basis that now it's coming down to content marketing it's becoming the who is out there with the best content that has uh, you know, that that really shows and, 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 and can prove that they're the leader in the space because they truly know what it is that they're talking about. And they're willing to come out and share all this information because they have a plethora of it anyway. It's not going to really it, it, it doesn't matter that uh, they're going to go out and deliver all of this stuff because it's, there's a ton more that they can continue to deliver great value with. So that's one of the big things. My second point I do remember now was <laughs> um, <laughs> is about the messaging. Marketing messaging, that's the biggest thing we always change and always revamp and always like, you know, create from scratch for everyone is their messaging. Everyone's messaging is so convoluted, nine out of 10. It's very difficult to understand what they do. It's um, it's hidden. It's written in some, you know, very business like uh, conversation, you know, a non-conversational style approaches and that kind of thing. And the one thing that I always say to everyone, as I say, it doesn't matter, you know, I'm a B2B, like we mostly predominantly deal with B2B companies. And they say, well, I'm targeting businesses. I don't, you know, I shouldn't talk the same way I talk as if I'm talking to consumers. And I say business people and businesses, the CEO, the CFO, they're all consumers. They're the same as everyone else. You have to talk to them the same way. And I, that's the one thing that we always say is we tell our clients, just speak human. Don't try to get <laughs> too crazy. <laughs> just, human. That's it. Just, just talk human. That's all you have to do. And your message will resonate so much better and people will relate to it because it's more conversational. It's how we naturally talk. Don't try to be so perfect and polished. People can see through that. They, they, they relate to real people to someone that they know of or somebody that reminds you of someone that they might know or that kind of thing. And that's what happens with this, what we call personality marketing. It's really putting you who you are out there and who you are is either going to attract the people that you want and it's going to repel the clients that you don't want. And you can't be something to everybody. So you have to just take those percentage of people who like what it is or who you are and your personality and market to them and forget all the rest. Wow. That's funny. Well, no one has to worry about being perfect and polished here. They probably already figured that out. Um, <laughs> we, we, we do the best we can with the tools we've got, and that's amazing. So when it comes down to it, what – all right, so here, here's the thing. When you start talking about personality and be the person – uh, and talk the way you talk. I am naturally, and people still have a hard time believing this, but I am naturally introverted and shy. So I will go over to the darkest corner and hang out there for a bit. I'm not really that that person where you take to a party and I'm not what you would call the life of that party. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm definitely always the designated driver and I'm just in I'm in the corner. Uh, that's just that's where I would normally be. So mm-hmm. are you saying that I have to somehow become a different person or disingenuous in some way? How, how does <laughs> how would that work in, in my world if that was me? If that was you as an introvert, um, then you basically 
you would speak the way that you normally speak. And even if you're introverted, you still are conversating with people on a daily basis, whether it's your friends, your families, um, your clients, whoever it may be. You just purely talk in the voice that you speak in. That is the voice of who you are as who your company is. And when you do that, there's plenty of other people who are just like you, who are introverts, who are people who say the same thing. I'm not that person. I'm over here. I'm over there. They're going to relate to you instantly. And that that what you would think would be a small percentage, you know, point zero 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 one percent of the population is million equates to millions and millions of people. So you don't have to try to attack the full batch. And that's actually the mistake that most that we most commonly see with most businesses is they try to go too broad. And that's what we're doing is narrowing their focus and saying, no, you don't have enough budget. You're going to blow yourself out of the water trying to go after all of this stuff when you could just go after one small niche and let's find one lucrative one and go all out and go all in for it. Nice. Um, OK, now I get it. What you're really saying is because uh, what I typically tell people is to follow one course until successful, you know, you, 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 or, or the other way I've said it is focused energy is better than energy dispersed. And you're mm -hmm. saying, uh, find those that you believe you could serve best and just do your best to serve them so well that they go nowhere else. That's what I hear. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Got yep. It. And in a nutshell. It. Got it. Now I understand. Okay, cool. I can live <laughs> with that. I was like, cool. I can do this thing. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so, in in your time of of you know helping entrepreneurs etc build their businesses there's got to be you know when did you wake up and go i can help i mean because you, you as you said you you help some really high profile individuals etc when did you go i can i can help these people that you know you cuz sometimes i i know this is true a lot of our, our students when they're first trying to raise capital or do their deals they're like who am I? They have the idea of who am I to help these people who have all this money or who who have this issue with their apartment buildings or commercial buildings. How did you gain that confidence to be able to approach them and say, look, I can help you? All right. Just a quick little break. We'll get right back to it. This one is exciting. And I know it because you can hear it in my voice how excited I am about everything that we're discussing. Anyway. Uh, quick update for those of you in the Chicagoland area. I will be up there later this week. We'll be doing, I believe it's a three consecutive days going through some real estate investing training, and I'm looking forward to meeting you. Make sure that you email the office if you're anywhere near Chicago. We'll be in Phoenix later this month as well. So uh, if you are in either of those areas and you'd like to be there, we could meet in person. Give us a chat over to the office. We'll let you know the registration details, et cetera, and uh, see what we can do to help you begin your real estate investing. Those of you who have already received your books, congratulations. Glad that you are out there. Those of you looking, wondering, can I still get a book? Of course you can. Uh, you can go over to cashflowdiary.com forward slash book, get your sample chapter as you, if you want, or you can go ahead and place your order there as well. And as you guys know, we're not yet back to doing the cash flow question. I'm in the process of recording the audio book. Let me get finished with that. And then we will soon resume our cash flow question. But right now, um, I want to get you back to the interview and I'm looking forward to uh, to hearing more about your what's happening when you guys are reading the book. Send us an email, go to the Facebook page, let us know. Looking forward to hearing all the things that you are learning. Now, let's get back to the interview. Mm, yeah, that 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 was uh that's a good question as well because it took me some time to get comfortable enough to offer it as a service to some of my clients. I had always done it for myself and my own business. And I think every service that I have, I pretty much have always made myself the guinea pig. I have made sure <laughs> I that I do that. I think right. That. I, I, I got to be confident that I know that this is working. And in the first place I'm going to do it is, of course, for myself. I can test it out. And if I fail, no big deal. Uh, but if I win and I see that it's working, I really know what I'm doing and I feel confident. I'm like, wow, I can produce some of these same results for some of my other clients out there who really need the help. And what really got me was a lot of the clients that I saw um, who were really taking a hit, specifically during the economic downturn. 
And, um, you know, a lot of them were on the verge of going out of business. And a lot of them were friends of mine and people that I've developed relationships with, with, with over the years. And I felt really bad. And I started this, you know, that's when I really went, you know, all out to say, I, I can help you. I can really help you guys get off the get off the ground and, and not go out of business. And I'll tell you one story. There was a, a client of mine. She's a uh, a therapist. Uh, uh, in New York, in uh, New York City. And she was on the verge of pretty much closing her door. She says, I don't know what I'm going to do. I lost my lead sources, blah, blah, blah. And I, I'm literally going to have to fold up and go out of business if I don't make a move. I convinced her for the longest to say, you need to do some market. We need to do online marketing for you. We need to do online marketing. She was, again, one of those paper people. She's a psych, uh, you know, a, a therapist mm -hmm. and she deals a lot with paper. She wasn't familiar online. She felt very nervous about it. I said, no, no, no. I'm telling you, this is what's going to change your business around, blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah finally convinced her to do it after that we did it we ranked her we were doing seo pay-per-click we were doing you know a variety of things to get her new business and we really changed and completely turned her business around from her having about three clients to her having you know about 14 15 clients on a daily basis every day consistently to the point where she was booked up where she could not do any more appointments and she was just so ecstatic about it and i felt really great that i helped this person just revitalize their business and she was a really good person and i liked her personally so it was a it was a good it was a great feeling for that now what happened afterwards was because of what we had done for her um she not only her business turned around but she got picked up and was featured and she was on uh, Oprah's channel, the own uh, wow. channel. And she got huge exposure for being she's one of the people on there talking about it's one of the shows they have about, you know, disloyalty and all this kind of stuff. And she's one of the therapists who are on there, t t you know, kind of teaching people how what happens in these situations, and what you should do. But that completely changed her entire her entire business around. So stuff like that makes me feel really good. The reason why I do this still uh, not just for for the good feeling I feel for making them a lot of money, but just to see everyone really, you know, be flourish and what they do, love to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I like how you, you mentioned the point that, uh, that last point about, it's not about just about the funds and you, you do that because yeah, you, you like eating, you know, I've gotten used to eating. My wife likes eating, my kids like <laughs> right. eating. Uh, they would like, you know, revolt if that somehow stopped. So, <laughs> but yet at the same time, you could do anything to generate cash so that you could eat. What you're talking about is you, you have, it sounds like you have a genuine passion and connection for those that you work with to be able to transform them into something else and put them on a completely new uh, playing field. Because oftentimes, you know, I, I, you know, I often think about this, like the cure for cancer is probably out there. No one knows about it because they have a bad marketing agent or something, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, because right. we, we all develop these things, you know, in our garages and our ideas and we don't go tell anyone. And that's one of the things that I want to share with everybody that's listening right now is that when I first got started, my marketing plan, let me let me tell you guys how a, a, a dev how big it was. It 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 it. it entailed me from 10 p.m. to about 2 a.m. Um, passing out flyers on a postcard and putting them on doors, walking neighborhoods, yes, at night. I said the time frame correctly. It would be 10 p.m. to 2 a.m., walking neighborhoods, putting them out, because that was the only thing I knew to do. I didn't know how to do anything else. And I was like, I don't have any money to pay anybody to do anything. The reason I'm sharing that with you is because getting started, doing something is better than sitting around saying I can't do anything. And I hear that from you. Uh, I hear that that's, that's kind of what you're saying, because that's what she was saying at one time. She was like, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. And she was focused on what her solutions were. But you were her solution. And she didn't know that. And right. until she opened up and told you what was going on. You, you weren't able to, you know, actually come in and provide the solution and the new ideas that were necessary in order to turn that around. Um, what are some of the other, I, I'm just kind of curious, is do you find that to be a common theme uh, amongst those is that they, the, that when they come to you, they're like, we don't know what else to do and, you know, help us. Or is it more of a look, uh, we know we don't know anything, so help us. Most of the time it, it is, uh, we don't know what to do. We're we're looking for solutions. They're analyzing everything, trying to really make sense of everything. Um, and and it and it boils down to you can only do 
but so much research into something that you're not an expert in. And then you have to take or have to trust someone that is an expert in that space to help you get over the hump. And so nine out of 10, that's what we're doing. We're usually pushing our clients to say, listen, I know this is going to work. I know this is going to work for you. Here's several other examples of stuff that we've done to show you that this is going to work. I wouldn't tell you it's going to work. And there's been plenty of clients that have come our way. And I just said, you know what? No, this is not going to work for you. Your profit margins aren't there and everything. I'm not going to sell this to you because I have to win. I need to win. And it's uh, my own selfishness, too. I, I see it as a game. You know, my wife always says that. She says, you, 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 it's like you're playing games when you do. I say, it is. It, it really feels the same way. My competitive spirit comes out and I feel like I have to win. And I'm, I'm playing with someone's livelihood now. So there's a lot right. more at stake than just, you know, a basketball pickup game. Now I'm like, all right, I got to make sure if I sell them on this, that I'm 120 percent in. I know that if, if I sold you on it, that means I would have bought it if I was in your shoes. I'm the only way I'm going to sell it to you. If I know 100 percent, I would have I, I needed to do it. it was the right thing for me to do. And that's how I look at all the clients. I say when I take on your project, I'm taking it on as it's my own. I'm thinking about it like now I this is my site. This is my business. And I'm putting myself in your shoes and I'm doing everything that I possibly can to make sure that you receive that success. And, you know, that's the part that I think continues to make me successful because it's just not about, you know, mathematically or technically putting together X, Y, Z just to do this, this and third. It's really about the excitement for me. And back in the day, I was a day trader. I used to trade uh -huh. stock market back when it was the the good old days before the the uh, Internet bubble burst <laughs> and all of that, the dot com burst. And man, and, and uh, I used to, you know, I feel kind of the same. I, it was a lot of adrenaline. It was a lot of excitement when I was doing that. And I definitely feel that same thing. That's what my wife says all the time. She says, you know what? This is you doing this all over again. You're looking at all these charts and stuff moving around and, you know, you're studying all your analytics. And I'm like, yep, this is another version of it, but it's more controlled. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's more controlled. So it's a lot less stressful. And uh, and I really I really enjoy that. And um, that's what I think has kept me going. OK, now 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 we're going to put it to the test right here, because here, here's the thing. I hear it all the time. People say, Jay, you got to be on Twitter and Google plus this and YouTube that. And <laughs> and I, I mean, I have a Twitter account. I can't tell you the last time I actually, you know, it's, I guess it's called a tweet and made that happen. <laughs> right. um, and for those of you wondering, it's at cash flow diary. OK, so there you go. Um, and we, we, we might have, you know, three people on there. I, I have no idea, really. Uh, so you're telling me that there's a way to use these things like YouTube and Twitter, that these two confound me still in terms mm -hmm. of you use those to make money? Oh, big time. Big time. We love it. We love it. Anything. I'm going to tell you this. This is something I always say in my seminars, too. Anything that people are unsure about or they don't really understand everything about it online that is where us smart marketers are always going. We want to go where there's confusion because we know that there's a lot of money in confusion where people don't understand something, they don't quite get it. There's tons. I mean, like YouTube, for example. No one understands how to market on YouTube. Very little people. Everyone understands SEO and getting on top of Google. Most business owners are pretty well-versed about that but they have no clue about YouTube. But YouTube is the second biggest search engine on the planet. They're also owned by Google. Um, people go there all the time with searching for what we call using keywords that have commercial intent, meaning they're intending to buy something. They're using phrases that it shows you that they're looking to make a purchase. And if you only had optimized and gotten your videos, which is 10, 20 times easier to optimize you for a term on YouTube than it is on a traditional Google search and you would still get all of that traffic. So we love it. I mean, we did gangbuster numbers with YouTube and we still do. We kill it because so many people are scared of it. They don't understand it. They don't know how to use it for marketing. And that's where we go all the time as marketers. So yeah, yeah, that's 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 a one example there. Wow. And you happen to pick the one I have the most confusion over. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. <laughs> I mean, it, because I was, um, you know, a few shows ago, we were talking with uh, Billy Blinks Jr. and his wife, and I was looking at their Twitter account, and they were very successful at using Twitter. And I was like, they got tens of thousands of people on this thing. I'm like, 
Well, clearly they figured that out, but I can understand tens of thousands of people how that could, you know, help a business. I, right. I, I've I've been completely perplexed with this whole YouTube thing. Um, so, OK. So then basically what I hear you saying is. All right. So I know I spend a, a, a lot of time either with investors or people who are looking to purchase, you know, property from us. I'll take our turnkey product, for example. When people go over to begin investing now, uh, they typically get an ebook, and then uh, we have someone uh, contact them. What I'm hearing you saying, there should be, there's probably a way using YouTube to have, you know, people actually find us on YouTube, first of all, because that would be a miracle. I'm like, exactly. wow. And then yep. that person through some videos or something would be able to find because they typically have confusion because that's what I heard, by the way. I often right. tell people where there's chaos, there's cash flow. But what I hear you saying is where there's confusion, there is also cash flow. So I'm just like, OK, I can I can get with that. Right. And a video that explains how our how is it. So should we as marketers begin to explain how our service works or, or are yep. we just telling them, you know, teaching them what, you know, investing is. What is it that you do on this video then? What right. You could, that, that's a great question too. And that you could do a combination of both, which is pure educational. And there's a one where you're kind of explaining what your services are, or you do both in one video. Normally that's what we, how we usually kind of put it. Sometimes we'll do huh. pure educational videos where it's a series of things just to get the people into your funnel. We're driving them to a landing page where we can capture their information and, and uh, do autoresponder drip marketing on the back end. But if we're just going out and you're saying, Hey, this person's searching for something, how to get, how to resolve a problem that they have, then we want to give them the answer. We don't want to just say, well, here's how my service works because then they feel slighted. Like I watched your video. You didn't even give me the answer what I'm looking for. So we make sure we give them the answer first and then say, by the way, you know, this is what our service does. This is how we make it easy for you. If you're confused, you don't want to go through it anymore. You need some help, blah, blah, blah. Hit us up. Here's our link below. Click our link. Click our link in the video. Go to our page. Put in your email address. We'll be follow. We'll follow up with you. Blah blah blah. So definitely a combination of the two is great content to have. But YouTube is purely, mostly driven by educational content. It is about content marketing. Again, back to that same thing I mentioned in the beginning. The more great content you have out there, the more people are going to cling to what it is that you have, and they're going to look at you as the leader in the space. And when they are ready to buy, if they're not. At that time, when they're ready, they're going to remember you and they're going to come back with an open wallet and it's not going to require a hardcore sales cycle of convincing someone. They've already pre-sold them by doing it. And that's what's so great about it. Got it. Got it. So clearly we are talking to one of the experts, ladies and gentlemen, today. Tell us if we want to get more of un your understanding, maybe even say, you know what, just help us. <laughs> we, we're trying to get our, you know, our real estate business off the ground or your, uh, I've got some clients that do apps and all this other stuff. Uh, apps. So is it worth, okay. All right. Sorry. I'm see, I'm getting distracted again. Um, <laughs> I've been, because people keep coming to me and there's like, Jay, you got to make an app because they see the, you know, the numbers and the things that I do. And right. is, why would I want to do that? <laughs> Why would anyone? And, I, and I'm still. Per, I mean, that's the that. If I don't know which is more perplexing, YouTube or making an app. I'm like, why would I? <laughs> Why would I want to do either one of those? And because that sounds it just in my head, it's just like it sounds like a lot of time. And I don't understand. I just don't understand the benefits correctly yet. I'm looking forward to that. So if someone is listening right now, and you had to in one to one minute or less tell them, here's why you needed an app. What would you yep. say? Oh, man, I got a lot for this one, but I'll sum it up. I'll sum it up as best as I can. <laughs> app Store, the Apple App Store right now is basically, we're calling it the third largest search engine right now behind YouTube. So many people are going into the App Store searching for these different apps and using the same type of keywords that they're using when they're searching on Google and YouTube. Now, the competition in the App Store, remember I talked about the competition levels being very low in YouTube? It is almost nil in the App Store. Most people, again, have no clue what's going on with this app store and how popular these searches are and how many people are actually downloading the app. So no one's focused on it. Because we're an SEO firm, we figured out a way to do the same thing in the app store. We call it app SEO. And, and we basically optimize apps to appear at the top of the search results for any targeted keywords that we want. Wow. Now, 
We want to get all that search traffic. It would have took me sometimes I'm ranking apps in seven days that would have taken me two years on Google to rank for. And it's so competitive and so costly. Some of these keywords are over $50, $60 a click right now on Google. Uh. But I can rank your app in seven days for the same keyword that people are paying 60 bucks a click for. Now they're downloading, not only are they clicking, they're downloading your app. And this is the real benefit of the app. Now, we've developed a platform where we say, Again, me thinking about my small business owners, I said, well, they can't afford to pay us 10, 20 grand like our bigger clients can do to make them a custom app. We got to find a way to like template out some of the main things that all business owners need. So we came up with our content marketing app, which is the same thing I've been preaching. Put your videos out there. Put your podcasts out there. Put your blog content out there. Put everything that you can out there so people can consume it um, nice and conveniently in your app. Now, here's the real kicker. When a person downloads your app, you have just inherited the greatest marketing feature in the world right now that people don't understand. This gives you the capability of sending those people what's called push notifications. And push notifications, many are familiar if you have eBay or Amazon on your phone and apps on your phone. If you've been looking at something or you're watching something that's about the end, they'll send you a little message or Groupon will send you messages about the new stuff they put out. Those are called push messages, um, push notifications. They come and they ring your phone they buzz your phone, vibrate your phone. They do everything exactly like a text message. So it's equivalent to a text message. They did a study and they showed that 97% of all text messages are read within the first 60 seconds of receipt. Good that is such a huge thing for us marketers. I mean, there's nothing. We are all in the email. We're all in the social media and this, that, and the third. But people got to log in their social media. They might log in once a day, once a day. I send you a push notification. You, I have 97% of the people that download my app are guaranteed to read it within the first 60 seconds. That is ridiculous. Ridiculous power for us marketers. And here's another kicker. They don't even have to have ever opened your app. And all they got to do is download it on their phone, and you now have inherited the ability to send them push notifications, even if they never click and open your app. So that is huge right there. That's the one thing I always push and say. For this one reason alone, every small business in the world should be saying, download my app, download my app, so I can get immediate access to my customer base. Wow. Okay. If yep. I heard you correctly. What you are th- okay? I'm stuttering. I when, when I get excited, <laughs> I stutter. Okay, so now everybody knows. So you're you're saying we could take our blog? I could take my YouTube videos, my 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 everything, and put right. it in an app. And put it in you app. have some sort of custom idea of how to make that possible for any small business. For, for any small business at a fraction of the cost of what it would have taken us to develop it custom for you. Awesome. Already done. Okay. Yep. So here's what I'm going to tell everybody to do. Do whatever this man says right now because we're going to go figure this thing out because um, maybe there will be a cash flow diary app in the not-too-distant future that I'm like, y'all need to go download this thing. So let, let me let me, let me me ask you this last question. If if mm-hmm. How can we find – how can they find more of you? Because they just heard me about Lose My Mind right now. I know they're thinking, <laughs> well, maybe I need to go find out. What, what What's the best way for us to get more, to understand more about what you do, who you are, how we can – uh, you know, further our business and increase our cash flow. Yep. You can go to the, our main corporate site, which is blazing multimedia.com B L A Z I N multimedia.com. And since we talked about apps, you can also go to our division of the company that specializes in the apps, the platform I just mentioned, and that is optimology.com spelled A P P T O M O L O G Y dot com optimology dot com wow guys it has been an incredible episode right now you just heard me learn and like i said you can't learn and look good at the same time but once you get <laughs> over that it is all good i want to thank you very much for sharing what clearly is a, a space you know way more about <laughs> than we've even begun. I, I feel like we just barely like put a dent or scratch in the surface, but I definitely uh, appreciate you investing your time here with us. Oh, thank you so much, Jay, for having me on. I really appreciate it. It's been a great time. Excellent. Now, everybody, you know what it's time to do. 
It's time for you to move at the speed of instruction. That means you felt the urge. It's time to go. Go over to ophthalmology.com. Go over to blazeinmultimedia.com. Go take those actions. Put yourself in that position right now so that you can trap yourself into success. Hit the request a, uh, request a quote button. Take some sort of measurable action on this information so that your business can begin to become something that produces cash flow. I'm looking forward to talking to all of you guys again soon. Until next time. Thank you for investing your time with Jay Massey and the Cash Flow Diary. When you have a moment, please visit iTunes and leave a positive comment about the show. And go now to our website, cashflowdiary.com, to take advantage of our free business building course, Cash Flow Foundation. Gain the knowledge, understanding, and skill that will teach you how to never need a job again. Until next time. Until next time. Until next time.